this is a good group here, man. It's a good core team. You know, they won over 100 games a couple years ago. It's not too far removed. So this is really full circle for you because not only did you start your playing career with the Mets, but you actually started your coaching career with the Mets. Yeah, I mean, this has always been home to me. I was drafted in the first round by the Mets in 1980. Strawberry was number one in the nation that year. Billy Bean, the money baller, movie star, was 23 and I was the 24th pick. And you mentioned Carlos Mendoza, of course, Mets new manager. He cares about people, you know, he, he, he cares about the guys around him, he cares about these guys. I think he's gonna have a great career, you know. And I'm glad to be a part of it when it starts out for him. Welcome to Meet at the Apple, but there's not gonna be any meeting at the Apple today, right, John? We can't catch a break, man. Well, first, I'm Vito Calisi, that's Jonathan Barron, but, yeah. and that's the rain that's outside right now. Yeah, we're quite familiar with the rain, I mean, you know, a, a season opening, six game homestand, three games postponed. That is, uh, that's unfortunate, but you know, you can't negotiate with mother, with mother nature. She, uh, she does what she wants and we're recording this on Wednesday. We just learned about the postponement about five 40, minutes ago. Nah, eh, a little longer oh. times right now. 150. It was about 50 minutes ago. Um, so we have a double header tomorrow starting at 12 on Thursday. I should not. We shouldn't use the words today, tomorrow, because you never know when people are listening. No, you also didn't need to even correct. When I said five minutes ago, nobody knows if it was 45 minutes ago. I know, but I, I, like, I like honesty, you know? I'm a transparent kind of guy, but... Um, but yeah, so, you know, like, not the best few days we would have wanted. Obviously, we really want to see a Mets win. Uh, we want to watch the Mets baseball. Three night games scheduled. Only one night game will be played by the end of this. We're still going to release an episode on after the doubleheader. Yes. We just wanted to give the people a little something, you know. So what we're going to give you guys here is an episode we did with John Gibbons back at spring training. And Gibby became probably like one of our favorite people on the planet after this conversation. Yeah, a very uh, savvy media guy. Uh, he did a podcast after he was no longer the manager of the Blue Jays. So he knows the ropes and you could tell and you guys will hear it in a moment and you'll all be able to tell that John Gibbons is definitely he's got the gift of gab, uh, but he's a great baseball guy. We talked to Carlos Mendoza last week about the construction of his coaching staff, and he had a lot of great things to say about John Gibbons. They actually they didn't know each other prior. No. So it's also a homecoming for John Gibbons and Howie Rose actually said welcome back to Queens John Gibbons. Uh, when he was on the line on opening day, John Gibbons was a member of the 1986 Mets. He was. So a nice uh, full circle moment. And like you said, he's the man. So it was really great to get to talk to him. And uh, he had my favorite, what I think is my favorite job in all of baseball. What's that, bullpen catcher? Bullpen catcher. I think bullpen yeah. catcher is the best job you can have in any sport. Yeah, he also has a relationship with a lot of Mets that, uh, going back to his time in Norfolk, he was the manager there. I believe he knew David Wright before he David met, Wright was, was he known by the world. David Wright didn't play for him, yeah. but he met David Wright. Yeah, he knew him. He knew him, yeah. and they, they sp he told us a story about how they spoke when David Wright first came into the organization. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he was with the organization for so long, knows a ton of guys. And then he was telling us about, like, how he got friendly with Carlos Delgado, yeah, well, which was awesome. I yeah. mean, he didn't play – Delgado didn't play for him, but it's no, so yeah. cool that they just had a friendship because I'm a big Carlos Delgado guy, which I think comes up in this – interview we're about to play i believe so so uh we're gonna play that for you shortly i have i have an i have a take though okay i have a take not a take a prediction what the mets are sleeping the doubleheader tomorrow okay well that's a that's a bold that's a bold prediction mets are sleeping tomorrow i'll take that mets as in a sweep not that i'm gonna take the opposite i'm i want that i yeah. i can see that happening we got the pitching adrian hauser's gonna make his mets debut on thursday not sure who's pitching game one game two yet but let me throw this out there I feel like Adrian Hauser, by the way, how about Sean Manaya? before I get to Adrian Hauser, We've had three, or will have three Mets debuts in the rotation between Saturday and Thursday, Seve, Manaya, and Hauser. Sean Manaya was downright dominant. I was hoping so hard for him to get two more strikeouts, to get to 10. There was an incredible nugget that we couldn't quite get there. Him having eight in his Mets debut was actually still historic. But had he gotten to 10, and I know he didn't, but I'm still going to put it out there. Had he gotten a 10? This is a director's cut of John's scoreboard antics. Uh, kind of. I mean, <laughs> not really. I would have brought this up regardless. Had he gotten a 10, he would have been just the fourth pitcher in Mets history to have 10 or more strikeouts in his debut. Were you in here when I posed the trivia question to the room? No, I was no. not. All right. No. So can, I'm, one of them you're never going to guess. The other two are gettable. So four. So the, he so would have been the fourth. He would have been the fourth. Four pitchers. How about this? He, there have been three. He would have been the fourth. You want to... The first person to comment on this video, yeah. put your Twitter handle on the YouTube comments. Yeah. The first person to correct all four of correct, maybe we'll send you something. We can send you something. How about a Jose Quintana signed baseball? We have that. 
We have a Jose Quintana signed baseball. We do. So if you're the first person to guess the four pitchers. No, there have been three. He would have been the fourth. Oh, you would have been the fourth. Yeah. So the first person to list the three pitchers. With 10 or more strikeouts in their Mets debut, not Major League debut. If they came to the team after pitching elsewhere and in their first start as a Met had 10 or more strikeouts, that person will get assigned baseball. Here's the problem with that. I feel like it's actually, if you're really savvy, I'm not going to say the website to go to. There, I think, is a way to cheat and look it up. But you know what? Whatever. Because well, yeah, there's, there's you know a way to cheat. Yeah, but if you know the question. But if you're listening to this right now and you know, just go, go and get up. after it. Thumbs up. And we'll yeah. be doing stuff like this from time to time. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure because you actually have the you have the leg up if you subscribe to the podcast on audio. You That's know right. Why? Because it, you hear it. And then the second that it goes up on YouTube, you could go comment. That's right. But. So what we want you to do, put the three Mets players to get 10 strikeouts or more in their debut. And in that comment on the Mets YouTube, put your Twitter handle, and then I'll reach out to you. Yeah. So um, anyway, Sean was that close. But Adrian Hauser, he has a four ERA, which on the surface, you might say, well, that's not a two ERA. But consider this. You know what a quality start is, of course, I right? I do know what a quality start is. Quality start, six innings. Three earned runs or fewer, but three, three, or earned, fewer. three earned runs counts. Do you know what a, an ERA comes out to if you go six innings and allow three earned or, less, or three earned? Is it four? Four and a half. Yeah, quality starts are really interesting. Quality start and win, both very interesting stats. But a quality start, look, it's not the end all be all, but if you go out and you pitch six innings and allow no more than three earned, you gave your team a chance to you win did. the that's, game. I mean, that's why it's called a quality start. Right. And, I know that it's a it's a quant it's a qualifier, not a quantifier, but you gave your chance team to win. And to me, Adrian Hauser does more than that. A couple years ago in 2021, his sinker had the seventh highest run value of any pitch in the entire sport. And we saw it in spring training. He was looking like Greg Maddox on some days, painting that back door on the outside black. So I'm really excited to see Adrian Hauser. Of course, David Stearns had him in Milwaukee. Went out of his way to bring him here. He is a solid, solid starting pitcher. And uh, another guy that I'm excited for. So, unfortunately, we have to wait 24 more hours. Like we said, not sure if it'll be game one or game two. And if you are here for either of those games, take a stop at the team store and you can get these sweet jackets that we're wearing. That's right. You should be here for both of them because, honestly, 12 p.m., yeah. single admission, In that's April? baseball heaven, baby. In April? That's, that's baseball a, heaven. That's a call out of work. Take your kid out of school. Yeah. It's not too hot. Yeah. Enjoy a nice baseball game. Go to the Mets team store. I got a new era jacket on. This is the pro standard I'm That's rocking. That's the pro standard. And I'm actually, I have something in common with somebody. You do? Do you know who wore this jacket the other day? I believe uh, a certain Steve Cohen was, was spotted wearing that bad boy. He did. And honestly, he must have been comfortable and warm because this thing, I am, uh, I'm getting hot in here. We're in the control room right now at City Field, and I'm getting, I'm getting warm wearing this thing. Yeah. And this, this thing's got some shine. It's got some, some glimmer. And it's nice and light. That's a great transitional jacket for spring into summer yeah not for the last two days because it's quite ch- i was going to throw my uh, my canada goose on and put my hood on this is the goose boy i was going to put my hood on just because it doesn't <laughs> stop raining and i wanted to you know what and i hope no one has a problem with my outfit here oh i didn't know you had a hood by the way i tweeted at that person i want i want an answer tell me what was wrong because you know don't don't come at don't that was like a, a little grenade thrown and someone runs scurries, just thrown it that would have been scurries fun. away <laughs> oh all right. Scurried away. So anyway, let's scurry away right now from this intro. Enjoy the interview with John Gibbons and please subscribe, like, comment below on this video. Give us some five star reviews. Say something about the show. Mm-hmm. But one more time, if you're listening, go to the Mets YouTube. Once this episode is up, leave that comment. Who were the three Mets pitchers to strike out 10 or more in their debut and put your Twitter handle on there? But Here's our interview with John Gibbons. Enjoy. And stay dry if you can. I'm Vito Calisi. This is Jonathan Barron. We're joined by John Gibbons, the Mets' brand new bench coach. And thanks for meeting us here at the Apple. Hey, hey, you know what? This is a, I'm back where it all started, you know, and I couldn't be more excited. I, you know, I walk around this place. It looks a little different than, I was here the first year in 1988. We heard there used to be warthogs and stuff everywhere. Oh, yeah, there was yeah, yeah, you, you, had, you had to be careful where you went. You never knew what you, some good Did you joke. hear the story about, have you heard about Sid Fernandez getting chased by a wild boar while he was running one of his first years here? No, I didn't know that. Sid, Sid might have made that one out. No. <laughs> oh, man. So <laughs> this is really full circle for you because not only did you start your playing career with the Mets, but you actually started your coaching career with the Mets. Yeah, you know what? Uh, 
I mean, this has always been home to me. I was drafted in the first round by the, the Mets in 1980. One of the first round picks went bad. You know, there was a few. Actually, it was Strawberry was number one in the nation that year. Billy Bean, the mm -hmm. money baller, movie star, it was 23, and I was the 24th pick. And, uh, you know, Frank Cashin was a GM then. One of, them, one of them had a great career. The other became an executive. The other became a coach. So I don't know if they would have considered that a success or not. You know, we're, two of us are still in the game, but... Yeah, so this has always been home. My playing career never went as expected. You know, I, I, you know, I got a couple years in the big leagues, and not a lot of playing time, but I was part of a, a great team, and it, you know, a team that'll never disappear in Mets lore. You know, uh, but then I read the writing on the wall and got into coaching, and, and uh, you know, the Mets gave me my first chance of doing that. And you know, eventually, eventually, I kind of hit a roadblock. I wanted to get to the big leagues as a coach. There wasn't any opportunities here, so I walked away, and I got an opportunity in Toronto. Um, and that's kind of been my home for the, you know, for the last, or well, I've been off the last four years after I got fired. But yeah, but when I got a chance to come back here, I see, oh, I jumped on it. You know, I don't know if I would have done it everywhere, you know. Yeah. But this is part, and I really, really hit it off with Mindy, you know, and, and uh, so, so I hear who, how long it lasts, who, who knows, but it, it's great to see some familiar faces, and, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And you mentioned Carlos Mendoza, of course, Mets new manager. How did it come to be? Did he reach out to you? How did how did it all happen for you to be here with us right now? Well, it's, it's interesting. You know, I yeah, I, knew, I knew who Mendy was. I hadn't met him. You know, I knew him from the Yankee days. And, yep. and uh, but I can remember thinking when when he got hired, I thought, you know, he, first time managing in New York City. I said that ain't easy, right? I said maybe they'll maybe they'll hire a guy that's had some experience. That 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 crossed my mind. That was it. And then a couple weeks later, my old bench coach Demarlo Hale called me. And he knew, who knew Mandy and said, hey, I talked to Mandy. Can I give him your number? He wants to call you, whatever. I said, sure, I'd love to. And then Kevin Cash down there in Tampa, same thing, right? I said, I'd love to talk to him. So when he called, I mean, we hit it off. And, you you know, you could tell when you first time you talk to somebody on the phone or in person, whatever, you, you know, you like the guy, you know, and he, uh, he's a straight shooter, but he, a fun-loving guy. And, and he and eventually led to, you know, I interviewed with a few more in the front office, David Stearns and a couple others. And here I am. You know, it wasn't something I pursued, but it was kind of when it, when I first saw that it happened. I thought, man, that might be something I'd, I'd love to do. But you know, I, you know, I kind of at that stage in my life and then the game, you know, where things are starting to pass you by. And if it hadn't happened, that wouldn't surprise me either. But it was like, hey, well, here here I am. So, and I'm looking forward to trying to help him out. I think he's gonna be really really good. You know, he's got that way about him. You know, a good baseball guy. And uh, so hopefully, I can contribute. Yeah, and what what excites you the most about the opportunity? Obviously, a very talented team. Mendy's the man, as you mentioned. You see him with his kids, putting in overtime. Just a great guy. Oh, yeah. But yeah, what what about this opportunity made you say, "Yeah, I want to jump right back in." Well, I tell I tell you what, you know, I I uh, I miss the competition. I miss the guys in the clubhouse. I miss the I don't miss all the BS that goes with it. Some of this, you know, uh, people have a hard time believing there's any BS involved in this, but you know there is some of that. You, guys, you have to, you you have guys to talk to people like us. Exactly. <laughs> that wasn't the right yeah. answer. <laughs> and then also, you know, um, it, it's a good group here, man. It's a good core team. You know, they won over 100 games a couple years ago. That's not too far removed. And you know, in in uh, I'd always heard good things about David Stearns. You know, you no, know, you. There's certain guys in the game you hear a good thing, you know, you never hear a bad thing. You know, he was one of them. I didn't know him. And, uh, you know, and, and they got an owner that wants to be the best, right? Wants to, wants to win. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good combo. You have a relationship with Carlos Mendoza so far. We're actually going to start one with him soon. He's going to be appearing on this show once a week. What's some things we should like? What's some things you want to tell us about him just so we're ready for our conversations with him? What's some fun small talk? Well, number one, he got a good sense of humor. Okay. You know, he uh, uh, when you first meet him, he might come across as you know, you know, if you're feeling yeah. But he's he's a fun, fun loving guy, very intelligent, well spoken, all that stuff. You need to be a manager, especially yeah. in New York City, right? Toronto, not necessarily, but New York, yes. <laughs> Toronto's a big city. Oh yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Ho hockey, U.S. Yeah, yeah, hockey yeah. yeah. They're focused on Babcock <laughs> when you were there. Babcock and Matthews, but we won't, yeah. we won't you talk too much about that. What? T dot. Toronto? Toronto. That's a big I have friends from Toronto and they call it T dot. I thought they called the big smoke or the big six. I've, I've heard the six. I've heard the six. six. Yeah. yeah, you ever meet Drake? No, it's probably the only one that never did. But, yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the guys on the team knew him or in, in especially Stroman. You guys had Stroman here a couple yeah. years ago. Yeah, I think they were buddies or something, you know? Yeah. Mm. So but you know what? He, he uh, you know, Manny's just a good baseball guy, you know, and, and uh you know, he came from the uh, he probably shouldn't say, you know, with the Yankees. They do things right, you know. You know, so it's not like he's coming from, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, from the um, bad place. Yeah, yeah. The, the evil empire. <laughs> so, uh, 
you know, he's a good, good, smart baseball guy, but, he, but he's, a, he's a, you know what, he's, put it this way, he's, uh, he cares about people, you know, he, he, he cares about the guys around him, he cares about these guys. I think he's going to have a great career, you know, and I'm glad to be a part of it when it starts out for him. You just mentioned we established an AL East guy, he was, and obviously you were as well. And it's always a dominant division. I mean, the Red Sox here last year, they won the World Series. Uh, the Rays have been very, very yeah. competitive for a while. The Blue Jays, the Yankees, and the Orioles now. What did you learn being in that division? You had Tito Francona, of course, Aaron Boone, yourself. It was always just competitive, competitive, competitive. It still is today, of course. Yeah, you know, it. Uh, every year, you know, I mean, arguably, you know, I was, I was there. I, I thought it was the best division in baseball. You know, top to bottom, right? I mean, there's, there's the big leagues is a lot of good teams, but you know, anytime you had had the Yankees and the Red Sox in your division, you know, the big money players, right? They were going to field a good team. The Red Sox, I don't know, it's like they're going small market or something. The last few years, I don't know what's going on, but, the, but they, that fan base won't stand for that. I don't know right? what Netflix is going to show next year, but <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, in the Tampa doing it differently than everybody else you know, is, is, is really turned into, you know, a model organization. Baltimore was really good back then, and then they, they hit the low, like we did in Toronto, and then now they're on the resurgence again. Uh, so there really was no let up, you know, and we used to complain all the time. It's like, uh, you know, with that interleague, I mean, with the interdivision play mm -hmm. 18 times ago, I'm crying out loud. <laughs> You know, if, if you're going to have a, a true wild card, you need to try to balance it because, you know, you're sitting there getting beat on by some of these teams. You know, if you want to make it really fair, I, I thought anyway, it wasn't crying, no crying in baseball, but uh, and they actually they've done that now, which is, I think is smart. But, you know, your, your big cities, your big uh, uh, great sports towns, when they're involved in that, you know, the, the, everything's ratcheted up and, you know, they can't afford not to have good competitive teams. So, you know, very few, very few years they're going to be sleepers, you know. Well, for those watching, if you can't tell already, John, great talker. I mean, there's a reason you hosted a Emma? podcast. Great oh. talker. Great talker. <laughs> BS. I'm having, a good, no, I'm having a great time right now, and you hosted a podcast for a while. We want to get to your level. What's some, like, tips you got for us? How can we get better at this? Because right now the ratings aren't good. Hey, 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 you don't want to go backwards, do you? No. <laughs> no. No, you know, it's funny how all that started at the, uh, the day I got fired in 2018 up there in Toronto, like three or four writers, I became pretty good friends with the media guys, you know. They, they asked me, said they, if you ever write a book, I want, I want to write your book. I'm like, really? <laughs> I ain't ever writing a book. I don't think anybody want to read it, right? So anyway, so that, that, was, that was gone. And then, uh, so a few years later, it was like during COVID and all that, a buddy of mine who had written a book came to me and said, you know, this publishing company and, Toronto wants to write a book. So I, so I kind of revisited it, you know. I said, let me try to have a little fun with it you know, about my career. So anyway, we did that. But then the same guy said, hey, why don't you do a podcast? Everybody's got a podcast, right? I said, hey. Including us, <laughs> schmucks. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. So I said, well, all right, let's give it a go. So we, so in the fall of, um, would have been 22, we kind of experimented with it. And, um, you know, got it was focused primarily on the Blue Jays. Got some of their current players, you know. And so that's kind of how it started. And then, um, so we, I think we did 43 shows last year. And then I got this job, and then he can't do that. No, he didn't mm -hmm. want to do it. I, but I, I, you know, I, I enjoyed it, you know, and going there and talk a little baseball. But like I said, we were primarily focused on the Blue Jays because that's where, you know, you know, where I was known, right? And then, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's not bad coming around, sitting around with guys and throwing a little... It's a good time. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a conversation, especially podcast. I mean, yeah. I worked in radio for a long time before this, and it's just fun to just, like, sit in front yeah. of a microphone, have yeah. a conversation, just have a fun time. And I said, very little to set up as far as, you know, I had the computer and then the microphone. That's all I had to do. <laughs> so I said, you know, so that's it. But anyway, that's, uh, I never thought I would do that, but, you know, we enjoyed it. Was, uh, was Buck Martinez ever a, a guest on your podcast? Oh, yeah, Buck Buck, Buck do a pretty good crowd, too. Yeah. Buck's one of the best, man. Buck is, yeah. You know, just a good quality guy. My first big league coaching job, Buck was a manager up there in Toronto. So he gave me my start. And then, uh, but yeah, he's one of the best, you know. He's been, shoot, he's been around forever. He's kind of one of those dinosaurs, man. Those guys aren't around the game much anymore, you know. They kind of, uh, used to be you always had those older guys that, Played a long time or coached a long time, they would they would be out here. I mean, they would be here till they died, right? 
It's kind of, the game's kind of, you know, weeded a lot of them out. And I think it's too bad. Sure. But you know what? I mean, a guy like you comes back with so much wisdom, so much knowledge. and Wisdom? Wisdom and knowledge. Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> Big word well, guy. You can be the judge of that six months from now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can the impart. The fans will let us know. <laughs> no, nah, you can impart all of it here. I mean, our cameras, our mics are always rolling. So you ever want to shoot the stuff? Oh, um, I'm good, man. I, I enjoy doing that, yeah. Awesome. So Who were some of your favorite guests that you had on your podcast, other than Buck, obviously? Yeah, Buck. I mean, we had it. We of course we had you know like uh, Boba Shed, Alec Manoa. You know, we even had Joe West on there. All country Joe. West. All country Joe. I always got along well with Joe. You know. Did he yeah. ever inject you? Oh yeah, a couple times. Oh, okay, yeah. but it was it was very cordial, right? With oh yeah, yeah. The back and forth. Yeah. It was. I didn't agree with that, sir. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then uh, Kenny Rosenthal came on there oh, yeah, two course. or three times. Steve Phillips, the old GM here, he was doing some media stuff, up, you know, and he, he came on. Uh, Paul Molitor, some of the old time, Cito Gast and some of the, yeah, we, we, had, we had some good bunch of guys. Carlos Delgado who played here. We would love to have Carlos Delgado. That was our heyday, 06. Okay. I have a game used Carlos Delgado bat that I bought the first year at Shea uh, City Field. The first year at City Field, I bought it for $75. I won an auction nobody knew about. And I want to get it autographed so bad. I know I'm not supposed to say that because I work for the team, but like I love Why Carlos Delgado. I mean, oh, like, man, I'll track him down and you guys get him on there. I, I don't know if it work. We might as well try. I would love. I mean, how badly I wanted him to hit 500. What did he end at? Like 472 or something yeah. like that. Very good. Very hey, good. You know, <coughs> what an incredible hitter. Only man. number I know. You know, Carlos just wasn't a slugger, man. He was a damn good hitter. How about this? The man belongs in the Hall of Fame. Ten straight years of 30 plus and 100 plus. At that position, he was the cream of the <laughs> crop. Up. For, for I, over, I agree for with For over it. a decade. And to fall off the ballot, the writers messed that one up. I know there might be some around here, so I don't want to say that too loud. But I, they messed I, that I, one up. I agree with you. I agree with you. You know, I watched it. I was over there first base coaching when he hit four home runs one night. I remember that. Him and Sean Green also had a four homer game. That's right, Greeny. Yeah. Yes. They were good buddies. Another Matt. Yeah. Another that's right. That's Matt. right. Yeah. Greeny came. That's right. You know, he has a big career in Major League Baseball now. He works That's, in the media side. He owns yep. this Green company, guy? Greenfly, mm -hmm. that like does all the photos and everything. What a perfect name, Greenfly, man. We've been using that in this game forever, you know? It's not, I mean, it's really cool to just see. I mean, I love seeing people stick around the game because like, you know, we all grow up loving this game, watching it. And then like some of us get to work in it. Obviously we work at very different levels of the game, but it's, being here is amazing. Like John and I both grew up fans of the Mets. And like I said to him yesterday, as we were walking through, I was like, do you still get like giddy when you're walking around the complex, just being like, we grew up fans of this team, and we're just walking around the clubhouse. Oh yeah, there's nothing like it, you know. Hey, yeah, it, yeah, New York, you know, and all the big cities, you get, you know, you guys are a little different, you know. I mean, you uh, you love your sports, great sports cities, tough sports cities. Tough, yeah. But the passion is, I mean, incredible. You don't get that in a lot of places, right? And I'm, I grew, I'm from down south. We don't get it like that. You know, in the Midwest, you ain't get nothing like that. Yeah. You know, so that, but that's what drives the game. But you know, the, it's why your your big cities need the good teams, you know, to. to to, to drive it all, but uh, yeah, when you, when you can do this show, show like this in New York City, you made it, man. Like they said, what the hell they were saying, or if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, right? That's yeah. right. That's a Yankee song too, so we leave that over oh, in the Bronx. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. We played back in the New York crew after the, the final Mets, out. Greet the Mets. There we go. Step right up and well, John, greet thank the you Mets. So much for yeah, boys, today. my pleasure, man. Thank Good you luck so to much. you guys. Thank yeah. you. Anytime, anything I can do, let me know. How'd you all like that John Gibbons interview? I enjoyed it. I mean, you know, every time we saw Gibby after we chatted with him, that was our guy. He kept coming by. He had some nice things to say off camera also, even in the he subsequent did. days following. So um, he did. yelled out during our Jet Williams interview, called him the boy wonder. He did. He did. Gibby's the man. Um, Carlos Mendoza's right hand guy in the dugout. Speaking of which, um, you might be saying, where's the Carlos Mendoza weekly? Well, um, you know, we make plans and Mother Nature laughs, and that's kind of what happened here. Vito and I got to the stadium early today before the rainout was called. Um, and unfortunately, we weren't able to link up with Carlos just due to the weather and all that, that good stuff, the postponement. But don't worry, we will have Carlos back on the show um, pretty soon. And we're looking forward to that conversation. Vito and I, uh, of course, we love talking with Carlos. He was so nice to us last week. We hope you guys Enjoyed that conversation. Good thing I gave him that scarf with all this weather. They're nice scarves. I mean, I'm excited for Harry Potter Day. I think that's later this month. That's the 27th, I believe. Ah, that's against the Cardinals. It's a big weekend. Yeah, Cardinals is always a fun one. That's a big weekend. Yeah, Cardinals yeah, yeah. always a fun one, ever since June 1st, 2012.
Ah, the Cardinals have been a big one since before June 1st, 2012. No, I'm just saying it's a, that was a fun that was a fun Cardinals game. That was a saying. fun Met Cardinal game. Yeah. How about August, I think, 23rd, 2006. 22nd or 23rd, August, 06. The Beltran walk-off. Yeah. Another one. One of the best Met games of my life. Well, we'll we'll save like Cardinals notes for when the Cardinals are coming to town later this month. But like, subscribe, comment. While you were listening to that John Gibbons interview, that was like the perfect time for you to just go subscribe to the show. It was. Or to look up the answer to our trivia question, which... Yeah, I, it dawned on me that if we're going to do this, I guess we have, you, you know, Mike and the Mad Dog, they used to yeah. do the, uh, the Super Bowl contest where you'd have to answer four questions. And if you got all four, you won a free, a fully paid trip to the Super Bowl. Every year they did that as they had their show. And it was a little tougher back then because the Internet wasn't a thing. But, you know, you could sit there with whatever sports encyclopedia that you could you could find. Yeah, Google's a thing now. I mean, well, Google's a thing, but I you're not you're not finding the answer. Two of them, like I told you, two of them, if you know Met history, even recent Met history, you can figure two of them out. The third one, I'll be impressed. If you get it, I'm impressed and I tip my cap to you. But good luck because I don't know how you're going to find that one. All right. Well, like we said, leave that comment below. I'm pointing right at the comments because you got to leave that comment with your Twitter username because it's the only way we're going to be able to reach you. So, uh, yeah, that was a... It was really fun to talk to John Gibbons. We wish there were more Mets games earlier this week because we would have loved to release our normal Thursday episode. But that's what tomorrow's all about. A new episode in your inbox, in your well, like in your podcast. In your app, noties, in your noties. Ooh, in your push noties yeah. on Friday morning. And, uh, you know, let's get some wins tomorrow. Let's get some wins. Let's get this rain on out of here. Let's get dry. Let's get down to business. Let's, uh, let's go Mets. How about that? Let's go Mets.